next talk is by Professor Amaresh Chakravarti from IIS Bangalore. Thank you. All right, so uh, the title is misleading in two, two accounts. First of all, the title that you have in the, in the uh, program is different from this one. And what I'm going to present is different from this one. So let's start. Um, the first thing that I want to do is just quickly uh, introduce you uh, a little bit about CPDM, because again, everything that I'm going to talk about is centered around the center. Uh, we have a master's and a PhD program in design and manufacturing. And the reason I mention is that the master's program that we have, where we take graduate engineers and architects as input, and try to give them a holistic training in design is quite distinct. It, it tries to embrace not only the engineering functionality, but also the aesthetic, the ergonomic, and, and the usability aspects uh, together in order to make products that are not only functional, but also have the other qualities. And typically, a third of our master's project where students identify the problem from the grassroots by interacting with the users and develop a working prototype, they don't get a master's unless they are able to demonstrate reasonably working prototypes. And I say reasonably because as you have seen in many of the presentations that it takes a long time to get anything to work actually. Um, second is that uh, about a third of these are patented uh, as, as, as technology patents. And uh, last year actually 100% of them have done an IP disclosure. Um, Several of them go for startups, and uh, uh, that's a very encouraging trend. The second part is that we have a P sorry, we have a PhD program, and that's quite again uh, quite quite uh, distinct. Is that we we look at design as an activity, okay, as a as a phenomena of interest, as an academic interest. You know how just as a physicist looks at uh, physical behavior as the uh, area of interest for exploration, we look at design behavior as an area of exploration. So there's a different uh, laboratories, creativity, collaboration, eco-design, and so on. And um, where work goes on, apart from that, we also do practice. We have a company, well, actually uh, a joint venture with TCS, uh, through which we get our hands dirty in developing products for companies. Um, we also run the National Design Innovation Network, Indus Network Center for Excellence Sustainable Manufacturing, and we are one of the design innovation centers funded by the, uh, the MHRD. <coughs> so with that introduction, I would like to start the work. So Indiet is about, uh, well, that's, that's a very high sounding uh, thing, empowering India, Indiet. So our goal was in this particular project to develop an online based tool which can provide a template for designing in a systematic manner, as well as provide a database of methods and tools that can be contextually brought into being or utilized by the designer as he or she goes through this systematic process. So I'll very quickly go through it. Um, so I'll skip that. Uh, so the, there, there are typically, when you talk about you know, complex product development process, we talk about these stages where you identify the problem, create the specification, develop the concepts, embodiments, detail, and so on. And we also talk about the activities that you take in each of those stages, go through generating ideas, evaluating, modifying, and eventually selecting the right ones through each of those stages. And third is, which is very important for sustainability, Professor Satish, my colleague, uh, talked uh, quite eloquently about the importance of life cycle and closing the life cycle. So it is important to think about the life cycle as you go through this process, so that's important. So what we did was we put these three together to create a framework, and that's what, what you call a template. And the template has essentially you know, the design stages in kind of x-axis, the life cycle phase has the y-axis, and you, you consider them you know, in each phase, all the life cycle phases, before you go on to the next design stage. And while doing that, you also uh, you know, take advantage of the design database, which has got all kinds of methods and tools, which are you know, tagged with various elements so that when you are at a particular stage of the process, you can identify appropriate methods and tools to use at that. So I'll not go, go into the details, it's just a flash. So you start with the task clarification, you're figuring out the problem, and you ask about what are the material issues, production issues, distribution issues, and so on, and you know, develop your specification, go to concept, do the same thing again, you know, 
and, and, and go through that eventually to create the product. Now, what's so big deal about it? So in order to see that, we actually took up a study where we had six different case studies, three in India, where we are uh, working with the Innovation, National Innovation Foundation, Anil Gupta's uh, team, uh, to find three problems where design was already out, you know, working and so on. We want to redesign that to make it more sustainable. And uh, I agree with uh, uh, Satish's view that it is either sustainable or non-sustainable, but in the intermediate period, as he said, you know, we need to tune and so on, we need to have tools like that where we can make something in between. So uh, we also did three different case studies, you know, at Berkeley, at Syracuse, and at uh, uh, Washington State, where we looked at very different problems. You know, problems varied from a water cooler in Delhi to a small turbine in uh, Chikmagalur, uh, where it was providing electricity to areas where has, there is no electricity, all the way to how do you make a conventional manufacturing facility smart at Berkeley to how do you make the manual process of creating composite wood structures in Washington state more sustainable. So we also looked at the, the, uh, the green roof at Syracuse. And I just, uh, I'll skip these slides, but basically what we found, this is a case study at Syracuse, where we looked at the problems with uh, uh, this wood composite making, and uh, essentially went through that, redesigned it using this tool, where we looked at every stage, identified the particular sustainable definition that matters, indicators that matter in order to evaluate, applied various methods and tools, input output analysis, you know, house of quality, function structure, life cycle analysis, material flow analysis, brainstorming, uh, morphological chart, uh, lexicographical uh, rule for evaluation, and fault tree analysis, and so on, eventually to produce new designs that and new processes of making this, which would lead to uh, a reduction in cost, increase in life, efficiency in energy consumption, and so on. And that's more or less the pattern in which we found across all these case studies. And um, these are some of the sort of anecdotal uh, elements, but we did a proper study where we took two different groups of teams, one used the tool, one did not use the tool, and you could compare and see the significant difference. Uh, so what, is, what does it mean for, um, for our points? First is that the problem we want to do, look at is how to train future engineers in sustainable design. This is a big problem. And this can make many things inclusive. Uh, so we wanted to see design of product services manufacturing systems. Uh, for example, how to design a workshop for training grassroots engineers, uh, grassroots innovators. And the solution we wanted to look at this web-based tool. Uh, experience was overall highly positive, but it needed greater guidance in using the tool. In other words, mentoring is quite critical. And uh, it could possi possibly be used also for general training in design, for example, grassroots innovators as well as school dropouts. So the learning said that can we revolutionize, uh, revolutionize training in design thinking, uh, but with appropriate training methods. And what we are taking it next is develop a scalable online version for National Design Innovation Test Network, where we can do mentoring in methods over the internet. We can provide knowledge capture and also capture of comments on the use of the tools. You know how good they were, where there was problems. Is there a new tool you should be adding? So the idea is that can we co-develop this framework online over a period of time? And it's not limited to India. It can be used by anybody. Uh, and in the last, last few seconds, let me just quickly, oh, this is the wrong one. OK, so this is a hackathon that we introduced last year called Reimagine West. And the critical element of this hackathon, there are so many in the country right now, is that we wanted to use the waste pickers as co-designers. So we brought them from their waste picking activity. We paid them to do that, because otherwise they would lose their livelihood for the day, and brought them to IISC and teamed them up with the best designers and asked them to innovate to change their own lives. And that's what we did. And what did we find? First is that, you know, how do you solve problems of waste management? Well, for waste pickers and primarily unorganized sector, you know, reimagine waste hackathon where we not only do a hackathon, but we have a follow up beyond hackathon where they actually develop the products and take it out to market. And experience is that it works to some extent. Uh, for example, one product hit the field trials in Bangalore, 
in less than a year now, and we are going to do the next one, uh, where the West speaker was an entrepreneur. So we have actually turned one of them into an entrepreneur who are solving the problem for the rest of the community. Second learning is that can be used for general training. Sorry, that's the wrong one. The second learning is that it's actually difficult to keep the others interested beyond the hackathon. So we need to have an institutional framework where people can stay for longer, be mentored, and, and so on to take the product to the society. It's a long haul. So that's the, that's the learning. So we are taking a second hackathon right now with some modifications. The government of Karnataka Technology Business Incubator is in process of being approved. And once that comes, we can provide an uh, institutional framework for such people. And we would like to have a more stringent entry process to the hackathon. With that, I would like to thank you. And the, some of the students who have been involved in the Indiet process are actually back there. Shakuntala, Ranjan, uh, Praveen Uchil, and uh, uh, Kiran Gargay, so please interact with them if you want to know more about it. Thank you very much.